been a long day guys. You can see it's night time out there behind me. We're at the leather working bench and we're getting back to this knife restoration for a client. We're working at it in parts as we can here as we've got the time. We're going to show you how to address a sheath restoration like this and this is a prime candidate for restoration. Sometimes they're just so broken down, they're so weathered. Leather is a live material. If not taken care of properly, it will break down, it'll degrade, it'll wear. High use parts like straps will start to crack and tear. Sometimes they're not really worth repairing. This one, again, prime candidate. Let me show you here. We'll analyze it together. Okay, here we are. This is almost textbook sheath for this style of knife. Whether it's this specific knife, which is a Emile Vos, I believe, V-O-O-S, looks like to me, sling in Germany. Whether it's this one or the hundred other renditions of this that was made by different companies in the same their similar locations throughout Germany throughout uh, England as well Sheffield England I've seen a bunch of these out of Sheffield again different different not that same guard not exactly the same but much the same but this is textbook sheath for all of them simple beautiful and doesn't eat up a lot of materials easy to be stamp cut Nothing much to do, but here it is. This one, the leather is still very solid. Almost no degradation, except for up here in the strap. And again, this is a, a wear point, and you can see, and this is what will happen to them. Let me see if I can show you good here. Look at some of these cracks emerging here and that's what will happen and these will wear in and eventually tear. If this was really well hydrated for all of its life it wouldn't do that. That surface wouldn't start tearing but at this point it, it, it would probably last for uh, a lot of time yet but we'll go ahead and replace that strap. The little snap is getting a little soft as well. We'll show you how to do that. Doesn't really need much cleaning. We can do a little edge cleanup if we want but it badly needs to be treated. It's pretty dry. It needs a good oiling. We need to clean up those pins. I'm not going to replace them because they are flawless. They're very tight pins. Good quality. They're positioned nice. They did a nice job. So all we're going to do is clean the heads of these. The sheath does need to be restitched. There is no stitching left. And that'll tell you how good the rivets are. No stitching left. It's just rivets holding this together. So we'll restitch it. An individual segment between each so it won't be a continued stitch. Let's get to work. Dremel, little brass wire a wheel, heat shrink on there to keep it from fraying. A little pro tip if you want to control how much spread you have from your, because uh, you see you have this much wire right back here, it will spread a lot and if you don't want that to happen, heat shrink. <laughs> Now the sheath has to be restitched and this is what we're doing. Going with a light stitch and then we're going to do a re-dye after, just a light re-dye. Just work it into the finish to even out where I sand the edges and stuff. Using a saddle stitch for this sheath, even though it would have originally been done with a lock stitch. And a lock stitch, in my opinion, is an inferior stitch to the saddle stitch and it will much more quickly loosen up and break down and, and break free and pull back through. The saddle stitch is a very durable stitch over time. And the reason a lock stitch would have been used because a lock stitch is, is the type of stitch done by a sewing machine. And it can be quite durable but that also explains why the thinness of leather. There's no welt in these sheaths. Again, for expense reasons, 
it's thin enough then that they could stitch it with a machine pretty easily. You don't need that heavy of an industrial sewing machine to get through, especially if they're pre-punched. So that's why a lock stitch would have been used. But we're putting in a saddle stitch even though we can do a lock stitch by hand. And I was just sitting here thinking, I had, a, I had a gentleman contact me this week and I often get messages from people just letting me know they enjoy the content or letting me know they really appreciate my work or let me know they're praying for me and my family and I appreciate it all so much. But I got an email from a guy just this week. Uh, he's in his mid-50s, has little grandkids and he, he messaged me and uh, he said, I really love the show. He's local to Newfoundland, I think. He watches the Newfoundland Hobbyist on TV. He said, I really, really love the show. And his next line went something like, and this is probably not an exact quote, but almost exact. He said, there's a lot to be learned there for young men, if only they'd listen. <laughs> and I expressed a few comments back, and but I said, you know, that's exactly that's one of my main priorities or goals for the show is to inspire people to work and try and learn inspire people to do something to take up a hobby that could work into a, a lifelong career or a business or like it has become for me and we shared some comments back and forth and the discussion was kind of about how so many young men, likely young women as well, I won't speak too much to that, but young people in general for the most part these days, are entering the world, growing up through, with almost no hobbies or, or interests or passions. No passion, which is just crazy for me to uh, watch happening, and I am watching it happen. There's just... There's no real deep interest in anything. There's no real deep interest in learning, in wanting personal growth, personal development. It's just, uh, just letting life happen for me type of attitude. And it's scary. I think it's scary because, as I said to my wife the other day, we were having a little talk, I believe it was around breakfast. I said, you know, these people <laughs> in uh, before too long will be, will be leaders will be leaders at their workplaces or, or leaders of our country in our schools and they just have a, such a seemingly careless attitude. This is not to beat up on you young people but if you're a young man watching this please take some initiative to learn. If you're watching this that means you're probably that type of young fellow already. Let's be realistic here that this type of content draws a certain type of person but don't just be a, a side watcher, a guy who sits and watches these videos. Don't just come here week in and week out and just watch and think about doing. Actually do. That's the goal of the Newfoundland Hobbyist is, is to inspire people to do, to pick up a new hobby, to dive in. You mightn't have the resources to, to dive into some of them, but most of the hobbies I, I promote on my show are very easy to get into for for the average person so I really hope if you're a young person watching you take me up on that but ultimately I'm just one man's opinion me and him we're talking we're just we're just two fellas what do you think have you been seeing this trend maybe you don't have any young people around you in your life but have you been observing this trend that I'm talking about young people with with no passion they're just they're not fired up about anything. Decided against going with the dark brown on the front. I like that color. I'm going to add a little bit of antiquing just to darken the stitches a little bit and even out the finish. You can already see what it's doing there on the leather. Just realized probably should have put on some gloves before 
dipping my hands into flesh dye. And then I get accused of being a smoker. How many times have you guys said that? Ooh, this guy needs to stop smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Grab my uncle's broken headstone here. When the family found out he uh, didn't leave any money, just we went ahead and uh, and destroyed it, smashed it up in pieces there. Ten after eight at night, listening to Outskirts of Heaven. Craig Campbell, but I like the uh, the Warren. I can't remember his name. Kind of popularized the song recently. Real nice. Gonna sharpen this. Start on 120 grit belt here now. Getting tired. It's the last shop task of the day. It's checking the last one of the day. I don't know, the last one might be not up to par. That's nice, delicate, like magazine paper. That'll do. I love how that German steel sharpens up. People rave about the German steel. I think it's because of the serviceability. It's not hard. It's actually pretty soft compared to your American style steels, your vintage American stuff. Same thing with the old English stuff. Softer steel. But what that means is you can get a razor edge on it without too much, without too much effort. What a knife. Joe, you've got a beautiful one here. What a nice heirloom. What a treasure to have belonging to your grandfather who was uh, US Navy. Just about to close out this video, but got an email here to end the night. Nice way to end the night. Dear Kyle, just wanted to let you know that I received my knife today. It is all that I hoped for and more. The forge finish is great. I really like the fullers. The fit and finish is flawless. And my logo turned out really good on the sheath. Thank you. Huh. Nice, nice, nice. Happy client. And I think this client, I think Joe will be happy as well. What do you think? Look at that now. It's not dry and crusty anymore. That beautiful fresh stitching. Of course, we still have granddad's character on there for Joe. New strap, so we know we won't lose it. And of course, that beautifully finished blade. Everything redone, refitted. No gaps now, no gaps, polished, beautiful. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel, please, if it's your first time here. I have a huge backlog of content at this point in my life. If you want to go back through and check out, I have lots of videos like this, lots of content, old tool restorations, all kinds of sweet builds. If you're interested, go check it out. And again, what we were talking about earlier, do something. If you're a young fella or you're an old fella, don't just sit by and watch and wait and watch and watch. Don't just be a spectator. Get in on the fun. Get in on the learning. Develop. Grow. Let me know. Shoot me an email. I'd love to see what you're working on. Maybe you'll get featured or mentioned on the channel here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.